in the opposite direction where I know the area, no area, and want z-score. And I'm talking about a z-score because I'm still only on a standard normal distribution curve. I haven't moved off that yet, but I will, because obviously we have other situations also. But the center is zero, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. Let me just start with standard first. So here, I, I kind of like do it like this. I know the z-score or I want the area, right? This is when I use normal CDF. And in this case, I know the area and I want the z-score, so I use inverse normal. So I'm going to show you different scenarios here. Um, let's say the first one, and you might see your notation. This is similar to, let me see, number. Mm, I'll do the word problem after. This is similar to number. Okay, um, I guess this is like number five on the first assignment, which is a true or false question, but I'm gonna, this notation, P, Z, will go less than a negative value is equal to 0 0.34. Let's just do this. You are given this. This is information that you're given. You know that the probability that a randomly chosen z-score is less than some number, which is a z-score, because we're on a horizontal scale, is um, equal to 0.34. So I'm going to draw the picture for this because it makes my life easier. What I want you to recognize is that if I'm on a standard normal distribution curve, then uh, the horizontal scale is always z-scores, OK? The center is 0. And I want you to just recognize before I do anything else that if I were to split this in half, what percentage or what, you know, what amount is less than or to the left of zero? So if the whole thing adds up to one, right, the total area under the curve adds up to one and I split it in half and this is the center. So this is cutting it in half. Half of it is here and half of it is there. So 0.5 or 0.5 or 50 percent is below zero or 50% is above it, right? For my standard normal distribution curve. This is an area to the left, right? Of some known, of some unknown z-score. And that area is 0.34. So <clears throat> area to the left of zero is 0.5. And 0.34 is less than 0.5. And so what I'm gonna do is because 0 0.3 or 4 is less than 0 0.5, and I want area to the left, I'm going to say that this unknown value, we'll call it A because that's what they use, this unknown value is located somewhere to the left of zero, so I would expect a negative z-score, which is why they put that here, but you don't always have to put that there. And that area to the left of it is 0 0.34. So this is the figure that I drew based on what I had here, right? <clears throat> probability that a z is less than some number is equal to 3.34. I know that this random number that I'm looking for, I'm looking for a z-score. I know it has to be to the left of zero because the area to the left of it is 0.34. Okay, and I know the area to the left of zero is 0.5, so it's got to be pushed somewhere there in the left side of zero. Well, my calculator is going to do that for me anyway, but I use inverse norm. Okay, so I want a z-score. I know the area or I know the probability or I know the percentage. Inverse norm. Inverse norm is in the same place as normal CDF, so second bars. But it's right underneath it, number three. For me, number three. Probably for the majority, number three. Now, when you press enter, it asks for an area. It asks for um, a mean and a standard deviation. And then it, asks, you know, it says tail. So this is the part that I think, right, Renee, um, Renee and Kayla, you guys said you didn't have this part, right? This is the part that I think um, they said they didn't have. So if you, and and this is like, you know, when we had TI 83s, 
We didn't have this option. This is a fancy option on these new fancy TI-84s. <clears throat> so we were able to do it without that as well. And I'm going to show you how you could potentially do it without it, or you could update your calculator and then um, it'll, you know, it'll give it to you. So here's the thing. Um, the area, sometimes what I like to do first is determine the tail and then talk about the area. And the reason is because like Renee and Kayla said, they don't have this portion. And when you don't have this portion here, the calculator is automatically assuming that the area is to the left of the value that you want. So if you don't have the option of telling it where the area is located, it's automatically going to assume area to the left. So you could get away without updating your calculator if you want to. It's probably a little easier to have this option, but we've done it without it for many years. So if you don't have this option here, where, where you could tell the calculator the location of the area, then again, it's automatically going to assume to the left. So I'll do it both ways with those of you that have the option and those of you that don't, and you could choose what you want to do, okay? So for now, the first one is easy because the area is to the left of the value that I want. So 0.34 is here. My um, mean is zero, my standard deviation is one. And then it's in the left tail. And if you don't have this option, you don't have to change anything because it's automatically going to assume to the left and then enter. So you see how inverse norm, it has area and then it has mean standard deviation. So my area is 0.34, my mean is zero, my standard deviation is one. Typically we don't have this other thing here that says left or right or whatever. So if it doesn't have that option, it's automatically left. And this is what it's gonna look like. And then enter, negative 0.41. Now, I want you to remember, and this, uh, uh, this is something that a lot of people get confused with, okay? I see it all the time. What does that output represent? Is it a probability or an area or is it a z-score? People confuse this all the time because it's a decimal. Sometimes we forget what the heck we're doing. Over here, if I'm looking for my area, that's a probability. These outputs from normal CDF should never be negative. They'll never be negative because they represent an area and they represent a probability, which is never negative. But if I do inverse norm, the output in this particular case is representing a z-score, which could potentially be negative, or positive, it's this value here on the horizontal scale. This is not an area. This is a z-score. This is the z-score located here with this area to the left of it. And every time we um, deal with z-scores, we typically round them, unless it tells you otherwise. Unless it tells you otherwise, we typically round z-scores to two decimals, okay? So that's why in this particular case, I'm taking 0.41 and not four digits to the right. Whereas here I was taking four because typically probability, we take three or four digits to the right. When we have z-scores, we typically round them to two decimals. Know what the heck the output is. Know what, the, what you're getting. So this is a z-score. It is not an area, which would make sense because it's negative. If this if this, I tried to represent this as an area or a probability, it wouldn't make sense because I can't have a negative area or negative probability. Okay. What if I have P Z is greater than, which is 0 0.62. Okay. I have this given. Let's assume I don't have the figure. I'm going to draw it. But I know that I'm talking about a z-score. So I know that I'm on a standard normal distribution curve where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Um, I know that I'm looking for area. Well, first of all, sorry. The center is zero. These are all z-scores along the horizontal scale. I always label my stuff so I know what I'm on because it's going to change. So <clears throat> this is the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's bigger than some, some value on the horizontal scale here. 
And that probability is 0.62. So this is area given. This is a given area. This is given area. And then where's the area? Is it to the right or to the left? This area, because I'm talking greater, is to the right. Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Um, so here's the thing. Do I expect my z-score to be negative or positive? And I'm not, forget about this. Let's assume this didn't have any negative or positive. Let's just figure it out based on the area given and the fact that it's to the right. If I split this in half, 0.5 or 50%, right? 0.5 is to the right of zero. Well, if I'm talking about an area to the right of another z-score being greater than that, that's gonna push that z-score somewhere over here Delay on my computer. <laughs> There's a delay. That looks kind of cool though. It's like, okay. Um, that's going to push it into my negative Z score realm over here because that area to the right is 0.62. It's bigger than, than 0.5. Now, <clears throat> um, Notice that I put my area, my value for my area on top. I want you to see how I'm, I put my areas on top and my z scores on the bottom, right? This one, this one we had the z score, I put it on the bottom. Um, and that, and that helps, you know, also determine what you're dealing with. You know, you don't want to confuse the two. If you put an area on the bottom, you could potentially confuse it with a z-score. So just be careful, right? I always put my area on top. So, again, I am given area. I want the z-score. I use inverse norm. Now, I'm going to do this two different ways, okay? So, inverse norm. It's clear. Second bars inverse norm. The first way that I'm going to do this is with the assumption that you guys have this option where you could tell the calculator where the area is located. So I'm saying the area is located to the right of this value that I want you to find. And the area in that particular case is directly 0.62. Mean is zero standard deviation one. So this is the, this is the example if you were given or if you have this option where you could tell your calculator where the area is located. Areas to the right. Okay. So it's going to tell me that. So I have 0.62 as my area, mean zero, standard deviation one. And then this is doing area to the right. So I told it that. And then enter. Enter. So negative 0.3, now remember, this is negative, and you know, this is not a probability, this is a z-score that it's representing. So I'm gonna take two digits to the right of the decimal, negative 0.31, approximately. And I expected it to be a negative z-score because of the fact that the area was so big and it was to the right. Now, <clears throat> let me show you how you could do this if you don't have this option. So let's go back to second bars if you don't have the option here to tell it where it's located. So if you don't have the option, it's automatically assuming area to the left, okay? If you don't have the option, it's automatically assuming area to the left. So you can find that. And the reason is because the total area under the curve is one. Well, if this is 0.62, how much is left? This here would be one minus. 0.62 because it has to add up to one. So if the total area is one and I took up 0.62 of that, what's left is one minus 0.62. And that one minus 0.62 is my area to the left of the z-score, right? That I want. So if you don't have this option, it's automatically going to assume area to the left. But look, but look, um, why did that okay. But look, I get the same thing. Okay, 
So 0.62 was the area to the right, giving me a z score of negative 0.31. And then 1 minus 0.62 was the area to the left, giving me the same z score. Because the area to the left being 1 minus 0.62 is the same as the area to the right being 0.62. It's the same value, same location of that z score. So you could potentially get away without downloading or updating your calculator if you want. That's your decision, right? Um, I'm going to do one more because the center one, you have, I think you have an example where you're doing center. Let me just double check. <clears throat> I think that's on the next. Is that on the next? That might be on the next thing. But if you're looking for the um, center, let's say the area we're doing is the center or the middle, I don't know, 40%, okay? So I'm given the area, I want the center, the two values that separate the center 40%. And there's two ways you could do this. Okay. And um, let's still be on a standard normal distribution curve with the center is zero. Okay. Okay. And these are z-scores along the horizontal scale, right? And I always like to... You see this delay? It's annoying. Okay. Okay, z-scores along the horizontal scale. Now the center 40%, all right. Well, it is a percentage, so it is an area. So I know the area. And I want the values that separate or create that middle or center 40%. So there are two ways you could do this, but this is the middle 40%. Now, there's two values. Let's call this. Um, I guess I'll use A again, negative A and positive A. So I want this z-score and this z-score that separate the middle 40%. Now this is easy when you have this option because all I have to do is really just tell it it's the center. And then all I have to do is tell it the area, right? So, it, I mean, it's kind of direct input, negative 0.52 and positive 0.52. Now I want you to see something it's not a coincidence that they are the same value, but one is positive and one is negative. It's a symmetric curve. It's a symmetric curve. As long as the area is the same, which if I separate this, and this is how we would do it if you don't have that center option. Okay. Irritating that that happens sometimes. Um, <clears throat> if you don't have that option, so check this out. <clears throat> I have two z-scores. It is not a coincidence that they are the same value but opposites, okay? Now, <clears throat> if all of this is 40% and I'm cutting it in half, then that means that 20% is here and 20% is here to make that 40%, right? I'm still on a standard normal distribution rate. <clears throat> so if you agree with me on this, if I could find this value here, then I basically have found this value here because they are the same, just symmetric, right? One is positive and one is negative. So I'm going to focus on this one because this is me without the option um, of telling the calculator the location of the area. I don't have this option, right? Let's assume. Let's assume I don't have the option. It automatically assumes area to the left. Okay, I don't have this here. <clears throat> so what I want to do is focus on finding this area to the left of this value because then I could just inverse norm and find this value here. Well, not too bad to find that because, again, total area is 1. 40% is taken. 60% is left which means 
30% has to be here and 30% has to be here. Now let me double check. 0.3 plus 0.2 is 0.5 and 0.2 plus 0.3 is 0.5. So 0.5 and 0.5 is one. So I'm representing my total area, right? This is just if, again, you don't have that option of this. So if you're not downloading or updating your calculator, it's automatically going to assume area to the left. So if you don't have that option, you, you have to do a little bit more work, right? So, but, but it's not too bad because the area to the left of this value is 0.3. So I could just inverse norm with 0 0.301. So 0 0.3 is the area. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one. If I'm assuming this is not here, it automatically assumes area to the left. And I get negative 0 0.52. I get the same thing. Now, if I found the leftmost you know, value, because it's symmetric and these areas are the same, then I have the rightmost value. And I could determine that without like using the center option like I did here. But obviously, this was a little bit easier than doing this. OK, so you don't necessarily have to update your calculator if you don't want to. Let me stop this recording for a second. But. Um, but it makes it a little easier if you have the option of telling it where the area is.